In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the stats calculator in order to come up with a p-value for a hypothesis test, which compares the mean of two different samples. So under the tests menu here, if you come down to uh, t-test of two means, that's the function that you'd want to use. Now be careful, there is a z-test of two means and a t-test of two means. Uh, the z-test would use normal distributions to calculate probabilities, and the t-test would use the student's t-distribution. Uh, if you're uncertain, your instructor uh, is the best person to ask if you would ever need to use both of them in conjunction with one another. But I think it's more common that you would just only use the t-test because of uh, reasons that were brought up in the course. So uh, let's start that. And this works very similarly to the way that the uh, TI calculators worked when you looked at the class videos. Uh, the only difference is um, just how the information is arranged, but you need the same information. So for instance, uh, first thing here that's requested is the symbol that's in the alternative hypothesis. So either it's a not equal to, a less than, or a greater than that's in your alternative. And that decides whether you have a left-tailed test, right-tailed test, or a two-tailed test. And so the calculator just needs to know that in order to come up with the probabilities correctly for you. So let's just assume we have a hypo hypothetical example with a two-tailed test. All right, so continuing with a hypothetical example, let's then also assume we have two sets of data, the first of which has a mean of 25.8, a standard deviation of 3.6, and a sample size of 85. Then let's say we have another sample of 24.6, the standard deviation of 2.1, and a sample size of 63. Now uh, there's a couple other options here. So if you'll notice there's another option that says statistics and data. So you can either run this from giving the statistics, so providing the statistics of a set of data, or by providing the data itself in a couple of lists. So for instance, uh, if you have two sets of data, you can enter those sets of data into two separate lists, and then just tell the calculator which list they're in, and then run the function. Because the calculator will know if you give it lists of data that the things that it needs are a mean, a sample, and a sa uh, sorry, a mean, standard deviation, and a sample size for each of your samples, and it will get that from the data. So it's more common, I think, to see examples in homework where the statistics are provided. So let's run from that point of view. Lastly, we have here uh, this item that says pooled variance. Uh, so here, um, you might want to ask your instructor for clarification if you're uncertain, but uh, in most instances at the elementary level, we don't worry about pooled variances. And so um, we would just leave this unchecked. You don't even need to worry about it. So then just press calculate and it will come up with the results here. It's got a test statistic, um, and that might be necessary to answer your homework questions, uh, along with a p-value for your test, and that's probably necessary. Then the number of degrees of freedom that were used, and that comes down to whether you use pooled variances or not. Um, not really anything you probably need to worry about. And then it also provides the mean uh, standard deviations and sample sizes, uh, again, that were from here. But um, the reason it's repeating it is because if you had started from a set of data instead, then you wouldn't have known these values. So in case you wanted those numbers as well, it goes ahead and outputs them also. Although I will say that does not need to be a sigma. That needs to just be a lowercase s for a sample standard deviation. And I should get in and fix that. But uh, otherwise, that's how you use this. and. Um, that's all.